So we are continuing building our backend for this website that we're going to have. And eventually we'll build out this website in Astro. And then in another tutorial, we'll do it with Next.js. But for now, we want to finish up our Strapi backend API that will allow us to have data that our front end could consume. And currently, right now, we build out a global page that represents our banner content, our top navigation, including our logo, our links, our call to action, and our footer that we see here below. And if you finished the previous lesson, you know that we talked about how to populate and filter in Strapi and why this is important. This allows you to keep your API lean by only asking for the data that you need, which makes your application more performant. But as you found out, if you're a beginner, this topic could be a little tricky. But with practice, you're going to get that. So in our previous application, we took a look how to populate our data that would power our global page, which includes our banner, our top navigation, and footer. And this is how we represented our data in Strapi. We have our global page, which has our data for the banner, our header with our nav links, our call to action, and our footer. And we expose that endpoint. If we take a look under settings in users permission roles under public, we expose our global endpoint by selecting the find method. And we were able to make a request to our global endpoint to get our data. And in the previous lesson, we learned that if you don't pass our populate and query fields, and you just make a request to API globals, it should be API global, no extra S, we only get our top level fields. And we learned through populate and filtering how we could create a query to populate the rest of the items. So when I click send, nor notice that we get all of our data for our banner, header, which includes our navigation, our call to action, and all of our footer data. But writing this query from the front end could be cumbersome. And also one of the issues with this is that anybody who has access to your front end could literally take this query and ask for any additional data and get it back. But we want our API only return the data that we want the user to see and not return anything extra because we don't want to leak any data unnecessarily. And this is where Strapi's route middleware comes in. And so what we're going to do, instead of using this query string and making the query from the front end, we're going to use this object notation that we're going to pass directly in our middleware to pre-populate our data on our back end. So no matter what, our front end is asking for, it will only return the data that Strapi needs. You can find this diagram in Strapi's documentation on the backend customization. When we make a request from user, there's a global middleware that will always intercept all our requests. This is not what we're going to work on. Instead, we're going to focus on the route middleware that you see here. So what happens when our router gets hit before it calls the controller or the service, it's going to encounter this middleware. And inside this middleware, what we could do is we could take the body that is being sent to make a request to a controller or a service, and we're going to inject our pre-populate object. And no matter what else some user asks for extra in the request, around middleware, it's going to ignore all that because we're going to set our populate logic inside the middleware. And this allows us to keep our API a secure because it's not going to expose any unnecessary data no matter what the user asks here and b it's going to pre-populate our data and we will never have to do it from the front end so let's go ahead and do that so to create a route middleware in strapi we have a generate command so we could run yarn strapi generate and click enter the cli tool will ask us some questions we want to go ahead and generate a middleware. So go select it and click enter. We're going to call this global populate because we're going to use this middleware to pre-populate our global page data. When we hit enter, it's going to ask us if you want to put it in the root of the project. We're going to choose add middleware to existing API. 
because we're working on our global page and that's the only data that we currently have in our Strapi application, that's what we're going to see here. So go ahead and select global. And here you're going to see that inside our API folder, global middlewares folder, it created a new file called globalpopulate.ts. So now we're going to navigate into that file and uh, take a look at that middleware. So in Strapi, we're going to navigate to our source folder, take a look inside API folder, global, and you're going to see your middleware. Now let's go ahead and click on it. Let me zoom out a little bit. And here we could see our middleware. So anytime we make a request to our endpoint, we want to trigger this middleware. So what we want to do is we want to configure our route to allow us to one access this middleware. And in order to do that, we need to first get the ID of this middleware. In Strapi, there's a helpful command. If you do yarn, strappy and we type middleware colon list we should get all the middlewares and here you could see we have our api global populate middleware that we just created go ahead copy this ui id and now back in our application let's navigate to our route global and right after the API global inside the create core route, we're going to create an object and we're going to do config. And that's going to be an object. And inside this object, we're able to define on what endpoints we want our middleware to fire. In Strapi for our global page, we have the find endpoint. We also have delete and update. So we want to make sure that we fire that middleware whenever someone hits the route on this find method. So here we're going to say find, it's an object. And inside here, we're gonna say middlewares. And for middlewares, it's gonna take an array of all the middlewares that we want. And we only want to use the API global middleware that we just created. So now that we set this up in our route folder, notice again, um, in the routes, we associated the middleware that we want to use on our find method inside our routes. So when the user makes a request to our route, it's going to check, hey, use the populate route middleware, which will trigger that middleware. And then we could add a logic there, passing it to our controller. So now that we have our routes set up, let's double check our middleware. And here inside our return statement, let's console dot log ctx dot query. Now let's navigate back to our postman. But first, let's restart our application by running yarn develop. Once everything starts, let's go ahead and send our request. Nothing should change here, but in our console, we should see our console log. And notice that our console log returning our populate query that we're passing from the front end. By the way, there's a trick if you wanted to see all of the console log, instead of doing console log, you can do console dir, and then we could do an object and say depth is null. So let's try that again. So when I click send, and whenever you make the change, sometimes your server will stop. So just restart it. Now that our server's running again, let's retry our request. Send again, notice everything still works the same. And in our console log, we're seeing that we're actually passing that populate logic from the front end. And if you take a look at this, this is exactly what we wrote here when we originally testing the query. And that got translated into our query string that we are using to make our get request that you see here. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to delete the populate query and click send. Notice that we don't get any of that extra data that we want. And if we take a look at our console log here, we're not passing any populate or filtering. So now we're going to actually do this inside our middleware. So I hope you still have this code that we previously created. And we're gonna go ahead and grab everything right after this populate. So now let's go back to our global populate. And here, 
right after the import, we're going to say const populate equals, and we're going to paste in that object. So now that we have our populate query, we could set it in our middleware by doing ctx.query.populate equals populate, just like that. So no matter what our user tries to pass, we're always going to override it with our query that we defined above. So the only thing that's going to get passed to our controller is what we define within this middleware. So no matter what our user tries to type on the front end, they'll only get the data that we specified, making this endpoint more secure. So now, notice when I go back to our request, we are not passing our params from the front end like we did before, but when I click send, notice we are still getting all of our data, which is pretty amazing. So that means we don't have to make the front end do more work, and we're just able to keep everything clean, and we're just able to make the request to this endpoint, get all the data that we need. Why? Because we predefined this query params inside the middleware. So quick recap, in Strapi, we have middlewares that you're able to create. They get fired when a user makes a request and it hits a route, before it goes to our controller, it's gonna go through this middleware. And inside this middleware, we're deciding what we wanna pre-populate. And then it sets the populate filters that we created and sends them to our controller, which returns our data. And that's why we're able to see full response in our endpoint. Moving forward, this is gonna be our approach because not only does it simplify how we could consume our API from the front end, but it makes our application more secure because instead of deciding what to filter and what data to get from the front end, we are making sure that we're setting that pre-populate logic inside our middleware. You're probably wondering, but what if we want to allow like search or filter or pagination? We could add additional logic here, which will still use our predefined populate and filtering, but then we could add additional filter through allowed query params or search params that we get in the CTX to allow us to still accomplish what we want, but still not expose our endpoint unnecessarily. So now that we know our endpoint is able to get our banner data, our header data, and our footer, in the next lesson, we're going to start building out this landing page. We'll set up the landing page, and we're also going to create this first hero section component. With that being said, Go ahead, take a quick break, get a quick drink, some tea or coffee, and when you're ready, we could pick up in the next lesson.